Great. Hi, Vicky. Hi, Vicky. Um, what do you think about France, your real estate? Is it a dead end or are you still hold on, hold up to go to France again? Is it still a French dream? Like like me when I had my American dream, right? Because of this yeah. COVID, yeah. everything is has to be delayed and stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hi, Tricia. Uh, thanks for um, this uh, interview chat from the US. And I know that you're in Las Vegas. It seems that Las Vegas, uh, the situation in con- is in control. Because in every part of the America, each state is quite different. Um, I'm quite okay. safe now in Singapore because the situation is in control. And uh, thank God for that. I've uh, been praying very hard. And even before this, I was praying for Singapore and for the world. Um, I, I yeah. really do need, I think all of us need to really pray that, you know, God have mercy on everyone, that this situation will be in control. You realize that it's not, not in the hands of mankind. So if it's not in the hand, yeah. hands yeah. of yeah. mankind, yeah. It's true. <laughs> and it's not in the hands of politicians or governments or anybody in, in high places or in powerful places, it's not even in the hands of the most intelligent people in the world. All the scientists have come their heads together. It seems that they say that they may not be able to uh, do this uh, easily. So it's really in the hands of God. I think God is revealing um, a lot uh, to us. So thanks for this um, uh, sharing session um, from the US. And, and to answer your question, um, you know, the world is in shutdown. All the borders are in shutdown. I think only 90% of the world's airplanes are uh, in operation. 90% of the planes are parked somewhere you can see on the internet. Um, the planes are parked in the desert, the planes are parked in big plane fields and you've got all these thousands and thousands of planes all over the world, they are parked somewhere. Um, it's not safe uh, to take long haul flights for myself um, and because um, I'm actually quite sensitive to environmental um, pollution, me having, um, uh, you know, knowing myself, very sensitive uh, to external um, you know, bacteria, external chemical. I, I'm keeping myself safe here, and um, okay. my my properties are actually still in France. You're, that's right. Still in France. Yeah. Do you have any reliable agent to look after the properties? Uh, is there anyone who can you can rely on who's looking after all your neighbors? Okay. Um, my properties are bought under um, investment company, so I okay. have my own investment company. Um, and in France, it's called the SCI. Um, so um, I've got my my properties. Uh, I've got a property that holds a company that holds my property, um, and okay. also another company that holds the operations of my property uh, in operation. And uh, the reason why uh, I chose to uh, invest in France, I think. Uh, of course, there's a, a there's some uh, spiritual reasons that I was put there, you know. But you know, in terms of research and uh, statistics, and also um, uh, financial returns uh, for the long term, uh, Europe, or particularly in certain parts of Europe, in certain pockets of France, I should say, that still shows potential future. Uh, good ROI, and, but I have to say and emphasize that it is only on pockets of places in Europe and pockets of places uh, in 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 France. And you know the the mantra is always location, location, location. Not every part of Singapore, not every part of America, um, or not every part of France is is good for investment, right? I mean, you yourself are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, seasoned investor yourself, you yourself are a real estate investor. I, I, I hold myself, um, you know, uh, with great respect to you because you have been doing it for the last uh, over ten years, and you are a very seasoned investor yourself. So you know what I mean by saying that it is only pockets of places, not every place, and even in a huge city like Las Vegas or a huge city like in Singapore, not every place is investable, right? Yeah, so yeah, you really have location. to go to that street, yeah. that address, street is that postal that code. Address, the code, yeah, and also your neighbor. <laughs> Going into the various details of a real estate invest, investment, it, it, it's not yeah. just the structure. And a lot of people are just rushing in to buy a, a foreign 
uh, invest, investment in the foreign land. I would say that um, it, it is an art and a science and, and a maths. <laughs> Maths, science, arts, and also personal preferences and personal objectives, they all come into play in this uh, matrix of uh, decision making. So your question throws me into a very long uh, lecture, which I hope that we can talk over a few episodes, uh, part one, part two, part three, part four, because it's a very detailed um, uh, art, science, and mathematics and personal objectives when you're talking about uh, real estate investment, it's not just based on ROI. And based on ROI, there's so many things that we need to consider. Um, and definitely, um, we can't rely on an external party like um, a developer or a, an agent. Um, everything, we, it has to be personal. You got to go to the details. You got to go to the, through the grind from the macro to the micro to the mini. To the tiny details, I think everything you've got to check. So your question um, about whether there's an agent for me, um, my question, my my companies are now. Um, uh, I've got an accountant and uh, advocate, a uh, lawyer to um, oversee the situation. Um, everything okay, is okay. still now. Yeah. So do you have a like a property management and your lawyer and your accountants are looking after that? That's good though. So it's make the burden out of you, especially when you're in Singapore. You know, just like me, when I have my property management, they look after the properties for me. It makes it so much easier. And what are the restrictions for foreigners to build, to build a, a let's say, a, to buy land and to build a, a apartment buildings there? What are the restrictions though? Okay, um, if you're talking about the uh, science part of it, which means the administration part of it, I should say that um, number one, um, France is known or notorious for its bureaucracy red tape. Um, I will talk about that first. Red tape has been there's a hurdle of language um, that will put foreigners off. There's a hurdle of administration um, that will put people off. There's a hurdle of time taken um, for all this administration to be done and all the number and numerous uh, professionals involved in uh, acquisition of uh, a property. And of course, when you're talking about property, there are different kinds of property, right? Commercials, private, yeah, yeah. land, farm, buildings, mixture, I should say mixed development, um, houses, uh, buildings, um, you know, condo, yeah, and condos, um, yes. and yeah. also, uh, some things that is not available for us in a small country like in Singapore. So I think the biggest hurdle uh, for foreigners is not so much restriction, but overcoming that level of understanding that this is a new place and for every country, there is always uh, a different kind of uh, uh, economic and structural and uh, regulatory uh, scenarios. So for all these scenarios for every country, you have to come in with the mind that, hey, I have to learn. I have to really dig out and do my research. I can't rely on somebody who says that, okay, pay me a commission. And then I will promise you an ROI of like 9%, 10%, X percentage. I yeah, don't think yeah, it works that way. Uh, number one, uh, we are not hedge funds. Right, we are the people in the street. Um, we are not people dealing with billions of dollars where we want to park a billion dollar in properties. And even if you're parking money in properties, someone below down the line would have done that homework, right? So yeah, I think definitely. as a savvy investor like yourself, I look up to you and I'm, I'm very respectful of, of your numerous investments you have done uh, in Singapore and in the US. You do your homework, you run the ground, you go to the streets, you talk to the people, you talk to the neighbors in the street, you talk to the people in the street. You don't rely on just someone who wants to be eager to offload their property to you, right? I mean, if it's an, if it's yeah, a, yeah, a, a, an yeah. agent, they will tell you their perspective, right? What is their aim? Overall, their aim, you have to do your own homework. Yeah, their aim yeah. is to make that sale, right? They will tell you mm -hmm. that perspective. Yeah. 
Um, I know, I know, yeah. I know how they are. It's not easy. You have to do your own homework, you what? know. Yeah. And overall, we we gave was it positive or negative experience for 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 your experience in France for looking out for all your properties? Oh, definitely. I would say that um, number one, with the mindset of attitude, um, and what's your mindset? Um, because I came in with a mindset to learn. I came in a mindset okay. that I'm going to take uh, two to three years to learn about the market and an in-depth uh, investor. Um, someone is going to walk the street. And of course, uh, there's a lot of challenges and I always take challenges in a positive stride. So I would say yeah, that I all know your experiences, yes, you always do that. Yeah, yes, all you experiences to me are learning experiences. Right, yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so they, you are. yeah, and, and uh, I would say that um, uh, you have to go in with the, with, with the mindset, with the attitude, with the philosophy that no matter what happens, no matter what challenges, You'll obstacles, or walls, yeah. or borders that's in your face, you've got to take it as a learning experience to strengthen yourself. I mean, even if there's a border, yeah. um, you need to really like hack through the border. Um, but, you know, it strengthens your muscles, your intellectual muscles, your mental muscles, your spiritual muscles, um, mm -hmm. and your attitude of uh, being resilient. So, so for your question, it's always positive. No matter what uh, situation you're thrown, um, fire, um, climbing through the mountain, you have to take it positively. God has put you yeah, there. Definitely. <laughs> and I know you because you're yes. in the same spirit as me. You're in the same mindset as me. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to take it positively. How else can you live in this world? <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. Yes, yeah. yes. All right, Miki, I wish you all the best. It was really nice talking to you. I wish you all the best in your future investments. And, you know, I'll talk to you again and keep in touch. Okay? Yeah, I'm and so I, I hope that this is an opening time. of an uh, uh, introduction to um, a foreign investment in myself. Um, you know, I've given, I've given you my overall uh, mindset, I should say, even going into a foreign uh, property, even if you're going to Australia, you're going to Malaysia, uh, you're going to the closest place like Batam. You know, you have to go in with a very positive, open mind and not condemn yes. the place. Like, for example, if you're going to Batam, what are the opportunities there? You're like an investor. You can't condemn the place to say that this is a filthy place, this is a third world country, or this is a backward place. I mean, for, for any investor, even for Warren Buffett, they look at things in a different mindset. They look at things like, hey, is there something I can excavate? Is there a growth potential? And you will find that the lower the baseline, the higher the potential. The higher the baseline, the rate of potential of growth is actually lower. So you're talking about time frame and you're talking about baseline. So um, I would think that going into any situation, the mindset, the philosophy, um, you know what you're armed with and what is your objective uh, plays a very important part in how you see the world um, whether that place are people you know there's a story that I always tell my friends you go to a place an island and suddenly you don't see and you see people without shoes people who do not wear shoes there are people who are just barefooted right an island there do you tell yourself hey there's no opportunities to sell shoes because these people do not wear shoes so there's no opportunity. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Or do you yeah. go to a place to say that, hey, these place people don't have shoes. It's wonderful. Yeah. I can sell them shoes. It's a blue ocean. It's an ocean of opportunity for me. So um, with yeah, opportunities so proud so proud come with um, yes. yeah, with opportunities come with uh, mindset and with resilience, determination, hard work, and that kind of hard work that people do not know. It is really undescribable. It is really, um, you know, some words that you cannot describe. You know, the kind of work, the kind of the amount of intensity that you go in to make a road where there's none. And then you have to be the one to pave the road for you. 
So um, yeah, with that, I, I just want to uh, thank you, um, and I hope that we look forward to the next um, episode whereby I can share my some of my video experience with you. And uh, I'm so glad that you are really open to my uh, conversation. Um, that maybe in time you can share some of uh, your experience also in the US. Thank you so much, Trisha. Oh, for thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was really nice chatting with you. All right. Take care. Thank you.